Kaseki Bresa, the city bird SUV. Arguably the standout fixture of the opening weekend, certainly in terms of the storylines that it will play out uh, as Hardik Pandya will return to Ahmedabad as the Mumbai Indians captain after returning to his old franchise. So, on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents, he has been taken for timeout. It's Tom Moody, Mitch McClanagan and Wasim Jafar talk about perhaps the most delicious uh, storyline of this weekend. Hardik the captain in this as an opening fixture captaining Mumbai Indians and his international captain in Rohit Sharma. What's the one thing he needs to keep in mind? What are his most difficult challenges with all that's happened and been said? I think the, the first thing comes to mind is man management. You know, has he had those conversations that he needs to have around key people in that dressing room? Because that dressing room is full of experience and, and star quality and players that have got aspiration to be leaders as well. So I think that management around having those, you know, one-to-one -one conversations would have been very important um, and rallying the troops so they're all going out from that dressing room as one and not as a bunch of individuals. It's a franchise and a culture that you know better than any of us, Mitch, but this is fairly unique even for the Mumbai Indians. Rohit Sharma is a long-term captain mm. who's now going to play under Hardik Pandya. Try and imagine what that would be like. Uh, yeah, look, I, first and foremost, I, I'd just like to isolate it in terms of what it might do to Rohit's game. Uh, I think it's going to free him up a lot at the top. Uh, it's going to give him a lot of time away from the, the meetings and, the, and worrying about whether they win or lose too much and how that impacts the off-field side of it. So we, we might see a freer Rohit Sharma, might see him play a little bit more like we saw in the One Day World Cup. So I think for me, with the captaincy switch, that's what I'm most ex excited about, that Rohit Sharma is going to be able to go out there without any real baggage uh, to be out there and go perform. It's an interesting point you make because sometimes we don't, it's never documented how much time the captain has to spend with everything around the game, let alone the media commitments, but the franchise commitments, there's a lot of meeting times and that's something that, I mean, you, did you not see Rohit Sharma for a lot of time when he played in that successful franchise because of how much? of that happens? Look, it's an incredibly tough role. Yeah. Um, captaining any of these IPL teams is, is mentally taxing and to, to do it for such a long period of time at such a, a high level um, kind of just shows how good he was at, at managing uh, the, the whole team from, from top to bottom. So uh, I just think it's, yep, he would love to be captain still and, and go out on his, his own note, but uh, I think there's a positive underlying in it as well for him personally. And the other way of looking at this is Hardik Pandya and the pressure that this mm. puts on him. He's a proud man, but he's returning from injury himself, Wasim. Uh, he has to manage not just this team of superstars and the expectation, but his own workload. The T20 World Cup is coming up. Uh, what do you think Hardik Pandya, uh, what do you think faces Hardik Pandya most challengingly in that aspect? I think what Tom uh, stressed upon, you know, managing those individual managing those big stars, uh, hopefully they are all, all on the same page. And then obviously his bowling workload, mm. uh, he says that he's been fit since January, he's only played uh, D.Y. Patil. So we all don't know, uh, we'll find out. Uh, and he at GT he batted at number four, yeah. probably here he'll probably have to bat at five or maybe six. So that role, probably that's the role he'll do yeah. for the Indian team as well and, and his bowling workload. At GT, he could do that because he used to pick another extra bowler. Whether he does that here or not, that's going to be seen. Do you think he should play the same role he expects himself to play for India, Hardik, in this team, with regards to where he bowls, where he bats? I think so. I think he needs to show to the selectors, especially, that you know he's fit enough, he's ready to bowl those difficult overs, uh, not just at the new ball, but even in the middle overs or sometimes in the depth. Yeah, one thing we saw, Tom, when he was at GT was the team that he had, the 11 he had with Ashish Nehra, it allowed for him to ease himself back, bat at a higher number and have plenty of bowling options, even when Hardik couldn't bowl. Uh, it's not like the Titans were short of quality bowling. Let's have a look at the Mumbai Indian squad and see whether they can have similar sort of comfort for their new captain. Now, Surya Kumar Yadav is the big question mark at this point. Uh, seems like he will not feature in the first few games at least, but we await official confirmation on that. Uh, it's still a very strong team with the return of Hardik Pandya and Jaspreet Bumrah, even though they've lost Surya. Overseas is an interesting one. 
they don't actually need to play four to try and stack up their team. But there's Kutsia, uh, two replacements in Koenama Paka and Luke Wood for Berendorf and Madhushanka, like for like left armors. Uh, pick your overseas four, Tom, and the balance of this, of this team. Yeah, I, I was hoping you were going to ask someone else that question. Okay, pick your overseas, Mitch, it's a, and it's, the balance. It's, it, but it's a very difficult one. That's why I, I make that point. Uh, because they've got the luxury of so much domestic depth. Uh, you could quite easily go in with three. I, I, I think um, the one unexpected pick, I think they might go with Luke Wood mm. as, as an overseas bowler because Mumbai have always had an af affection to left-arm quicks, and quite rightly because they're actually you know, very important to have that balance in your side. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see... Um, Luke Wood, who's come in as a re last minute replacement for Berendorf, suddenly get the ball because he does swing it early and he's you know he's up and running. He's been playing cricket. A very, very proud smile, Mitch McLanagan. You didn't get that when Tom was saying that. Oh, so now let's let's see. Yeah, you could yeah, take no, look. It's um, I mean, it's very predictable that they're going to play one of the left armers, in my opinion, because they have a blueprint yeah. and they've stuck to it for a very long period of time. And and what what works, it's not worth going away from. So look. Uh, I think let's, I think build, let's probably, build a twelve, and, uh, yeah. and you could tell look, me what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, I think let's um, have a look. I think if Gerald Codsia is fit, I, I think he he plays uh, for mine. I, I think what they've been missing over their last couple of tournaments is a, a bounce bowler uh, at Mumbai. You need that little bit of extra bounce. I know we're talking about the first match against Gujarat, but generally over the season you need some bounce. Woods a, a, a really good option. You're right, um, Tim David. Yep, and look, I t tell you what, if, if they are looking at being out with the Surya, without Surya Kumar, yet if uh, Brevis comes into the conversation, yeah. started to get into some form towards the back end of the SAT20, and at some point, they need to show some faith in him a as an option. Mm. I mean, we're just, looking, we're just looking at that one more time, and are you happy with one of Nabi or Shepard certainly playing, Wasim? I think one of them, and probably Luke, Luke would... I'd probably okay. go with him. So for sure. that's two words for Luke Wood, and Mitch said that's the template. So let's lock Luke Wood in there. Uh, between Nabi and Shepard for a game at Ahmedabad? I'd, I'd, I'd probably go with Nabi mm. because it gives you the all round ability. If it's a bigger ground, uh, the ball will spin. Yeah. Just trying to think at the back of my head how many left handers Gujarat have. Uh, I, I, I think Shun, yeah. David Miller. I think I think Nabi would be a good pick because one area of concern for Mumbai is their spin bowling. Yeah. Charla was very you know effective last year. He's had a wonderful IPL career, but let's face it: at the beginning of last year, we were sort of very you know mm. unsure about how he would go, given that uh, you know this is very much at the back end of his career. So Nabi, also at the back end of his career, yeah. I'm sure adds some unique. A balance to their spin, one going away from the left-handers and one going away from the right-handers. Right. Let's move to the Gujarat Titans team now, have a look at that squad and see what their challenges are. It's, it's a tricky one to see if Kane Williamson can fit in. From all accounts that we're hearing, Asmatullah Omarzai, the Afghan all-rounder, might well be drafted in to start with to try and fill the void of Hardik Pandey, at least the skill set of Hardik Pandey. Rashid Khan's also making a return after a significant time away from with the uh, with injury, and as we just look at the rest of the options, no Mohamed Shami, such a big miss. Robin Minj ruled out just before the tournament. Their options are Kartik Tyagi, Umesh Yadav as domestic seamers, and Josh Little, Spencer Johnson, if he's fit, as the overseas seamers. Uh, lots of holes to fill here, but are we, are we still saying this is a very strong or a strong Gujarat side, even without Ardik and Shami? Yeah, look, uh, they're two massive holes, aren't they? You've got a world-class uh, proven all-rounder in the IPL and you've got you know, probably one of the form bowlers in world cricket in all formats in Mohamed Shami. That's probably, to, to me, that's probably a bigger miss than Hardy you know, with regards to the, that balance of that side and more to do with the, the fact that you've got the impact sub now and therefore you can cover a bit with the loss of an all-rounder by having that sort of flexibility on the bench. Let's have a look at the, the proposed 12, predicted 12. Mitch and Wasim can also weigh in over here. We expect Ridhiman Saha to start. Uh, Wasim, Sai Sudarshan, Vijay Shankar, who've just been terrific for the Titans. Shah Rukh Khan has made his way there. You spent some time with him at Punjab. He's still to deliver on what we know he's uh, capable of. Tevatya, Rashid Khan and Noor Ahmed, would you go with the two Afghan spinners together? One of the two left-arm quicks with Umesh and Mohit? I think, yeah, I'll go with Noor and, and Rashid for 
for sure. I think, like I said, it's a bigger ground, uh, and the mystery involved with Noor Ahmed as well. David Miller picks himself. Shah Rukh Khan, it's a massive uh, season for him. A lot of question mark about his, you know, batting against spin. Uh, in Punjab, he was always drafted, you know, for wait till the 16th, 17th over. So he needs to improve that if he needs to play for India. Uh, so it's a massive season for him, but still a very strong side. Kane Williamson, uh, he's he's there. He needs to improve his strike rate. Uh, you know, there's been question mark about how he operates. So uh, still still a strong side, I would say. Mm. Can they play Kane Williamson? The Shubman Gill would he like the insurance of? The wonderful experience that Ken Williamson brings. Well, they started the season with him last year, so he's, he'll obviously be in the reckoning. Uh, I thought Matthew Wade was good at the top as well, so he's another one of your options. But he's away. He's away yeah. until yeah. the Shield the, final. Yeah, Shield final, final. Yes. Right. absolutely. Yeah, but um, can you find room for Williamson here at the expense? Yeah, of look, I, th I think you can. You can probably um, get Tawati or a couple of overs and Noor Ahmed might miss out on that one. Mm. I think the big inclusion there is Spencer Johnson. I, I think he's a incredibly, not just because he's left-handed, I think he's an incredibly exciting prospect. Uh, I watched a, a piece, Matthew Wade, talking about him and he said he's, he's tough at the moment because he's so raw that one ball might come out at 130, one comes out at 160. So add, add that element when you're facing him, not knowing how quick it's going to come through. A little bit of extra variability can be key at some times. And he swings the ball at the top. Uh, he's a real weapon. He's uh, with a little bit of groove and he's, he's going to be Mitchell Stark kind of 2.0 in the future. Predictions, favourites going into this? It's at Ahmedabad, Gujarat of the home side. Uh, I'll probably pick MI. Mm. Mitch? MI. Ah, oh, come on. Um, I'm saying MI. Yeah. Um, but if you want me to say GT, I play play, <laughs> play play that game as well. There's no point. If but I think MI I think MI are too good. Okay, fair enough. Well, uh, let's see how things start for the team that's made it to two finals in their two seasons and one of the most successful franchises in IPL history. Gujarat versus Mumbai. This was our preview on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Cricket for Time Out. Hot and techy Bressa, the city bird SUV.